Um, I'll just get your name. Uh, Eric Booth. Okay. Um, I'm sitting here with Eric Booth, and he's going to be telling us about the Goofers Pig Farm. And um, I don't know anything about it, like I already talked to you about it. So why don't you tell me everything, um, how it started, and where it is today, start to finish. Start to finish. Well, I suppose it all started uh, with a Vancouver Sun article uh, that was interviewing the developer of the resort that was next door to us. Uh, at that time, we had a 20-acre farm that was beside a 35-acre piece of property that was uh, being developed into a resort. And during the interview with the Vancouver Sun, the developer uh, happened to refer to the islanders as uh, a bunch of goofers. And uh, I, <laughs> I, I was relatively amused when I first heard of it. Uh, but about a week later, the local newspaper, the Driftwood, interviewed the developer about this, about terming uh, islanders goofers, and the developer did a little bit of, I think, probably backpedaling, saying, well, no, he didn't really mean all islanders, he just meant uh, uh, a couple of them. And uh, through his description of who he meant, uh, it was quite obvious to me that I was one of them, uh, because I had uh, voiced my opinion through the creation of a, of a four by eight sign uh, as an expression of, uh, of what I thought about the resort, which I thought was at that time overdevelopment of a piece of property. And so I one day I grabbed a four by eight sheet of plywood and uh, wrote a four letter word in, uh, in uh, four foot high letters, uh, took it down to my dock and uh, screwed it to my dock uh, facing over towards the resort. Uh, the four letter word was not perhaps what you'd think, but it was actually just said ugly, <laughs> which was my opinion. I thought, okay, well, that's fine. I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that and express my opinion. But when he, uh, when he identified the, who he was speaking of as, as far as the goofers, he identified myself and a, uh, another friend of mine. And uh, I thought, you know, it was interesting that the name goofer, within an hour of me reading that, that it, it was actually me that he was talking about, uh, I thought, you know, that'd be a, a good name for a pig farm because we we'd been thinking about what we'd maybe do, uh, you know, with our farm and uh, we'd been on it for quite some time. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, I just thought, you know, gee, Goofer's Pig Farm. And so uh, that's uh, basically how Goofer's Pig Farm started. It was, uh, it was just a, a sort of a, a thought that, uh, that came out of the name that just sort of flowed together. And uh, mm -hmm. so that's where it started. And uh, from there, I thought what I would do is... Uh, I'd start advertising, uh, you know, good business, you're not exactly sure what's going to happen. And I wasn't sure whether the resort was actually going to complete or not. So I thought, I'll just go into the advertising uh, part of it first. So I uh, painted up a really nice big sign, of another four by eight sign, and mm -hmm. put it down by the road, uh, the Goofer's Pig Farm, and uh, coming soon. And I thought, well, I'll just wait until the resort got going. and. Uh, so from there, we went on to uh, a little bit more advertising. We uh, painted uh, my little yellow uh, Nissan pickup pink. Uh, I stuck a pig on the top and uh, painted up some nice side panels and mm -hmm. but with the intention that eventually you know, we'd be raising organic uh, pork and uh, selling it to all of the city folk and everything that would be coming over to the island that, uh, that were right going to be at my doorstep. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm just going to interrupt you for a second. Um, there's an article in the Times Colonist um, of that picture that you showed. So I'll just hold up the camera here so we can see. Um, probably zoom in on that. <laughs> and if you want to hold on to it, you can just kind of show here. Um, That's me in better days. <laughs> And um, I'm told that we actually still have this panel downstairs. Yeah, I've got uh, the leftover of the, the truck itself died uh, a few years ago, but I've got the leftover panel here and uh, I salvaged the, uh, the little pig on the top there as well. It used to have a, a light in it there on top of the truck. Okay, when, when they wrote this article, um, actually I'm just going to backtrack for a quick second here. You, first, when you said that, you know, the goofers term, you found it quite humorous. Mm -hmm. Were you at all offended after that at all? I mean, there must have been some sort of offense taken to some level after that. No, I, I don't think I was really offended. In fact, I think to some degree it was, you know, certainly if you, if you talk to other islanders, I think what you'll find is that uh, the term was actually embraced uh, as a, a means of separation between uh, the city folk and the country folk. And uh, 
Uh, I know there was one uh, Mercedes that was uh, driving around uh, for quite some time, and they've got, actually gotten the license plate goofer. <laughs> and so I, I think there was sort of an embracement, and it was more of a the again the, that uh, the distinguishing between who we are and uh, who city folk are, and uh, so it was. Yeah, I, I think there was a fair amount of tongue in cheek uh, going on from time to time. <laughs> Um, okay, so in better days, <laughs> literally, <laughs> this sign was running around Salt Spring for how long? Uh, about three years I uh, had it on the Pigmobile. Uh, if you can sort of imagine this on the, the side of a, of a bright pink truck, uh, it, was, uh, it was a real head turner. Uh, oh, we got somebody coming in here. James, <laughs> walk this way a little bit. So for the better part of three years, this was on the Pigmobile. <laughs> Um, what kind of reaction did you get from locals? Well, it was interesting. You, know, you drive by in a, in a pink truck with a, a sign on the side here and a, a nice bright pink uh, a pig on the top of the, the vehicle. And the people would actually turn their heads and, and watch me go by and uh, I'd smile and wave. And uh, so as far as the advertising portion and everything of the, uh, uh, of the campaign, uh, I, I think we were really well on our way. I think we had a uh, sort of a well-established audience and we're recognized certainly uh, throughout Ganges. I think that people probably because this has never happened in Salt Spring before for one thing is that your advertising campaign was so strong because there's never been anything like it. I mean people are like Goofer's Pig Farm what is that? Um, so obviously the name Goofer's came from the the Vancouver Sun right? Why did they do the article on you again just to backtrack a little bit? Well, uh, I think a, a lot of people had seen me driving around in the uh, in the truck, and uh, I, I think it probably caught the attention uh, uh, of the media in that regard. And and I, you know, I think part of it was the the, the color scheme. I mean, again, uh, it's not very often that you see a, a pigmobile go by. Um, you, know, you might see a, uh, what's the uh, the Wiener mobile, uh, the Oscar Mayer uh, uh, mobile go by, but. It's not very often you see a pigmobile go by, so I, th I think that was uh, likely a, uh, had a lot more to do with it than the, than the actual pig operation. Yeah. Um, so, Goofer's Pig Farm was an inspiration not only for advertising but also for music. Do you want to tell me about the song that was written? Yeah, that was. Uh, it was. Uh, I, I feel quite honored to have a song written by uh, Bill Henderson of Chilliwack uh, uh, down on Goofer's Pig Farm, and. Uh, uh, it'd be great if uh, if you can get a build to do a rendition on the piano of uh, of that, but uh, it was great. Uh, I, and again, when we were talking earlier about how the island sort of embraced the idea of uh, of goofers, uh, I, I think Bill really captured that, mm -hmm. uh, and um, likely some of the sentiment uh, between some of the islanders and uh, and uh, some of the off island yeah. development. Yeah. Would you um? In some humorous form, say kind of united <laughs> goofers on the island. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that uh, that <laughs> again, you'd have to interview other people to to get an idea. But yeah, I, I think that the term goofers was uh, uh, was embraced by a lot of islanders, uh, you know, in in good humor. And uh, uh, you know, a lot of people said, well, this was a protest. Uh, uh, I guess that people look at different things differently, but I just thought as a Know, pre advertising to a business venture that just because the resort never really got going, uh, I, we just never had a chance to actually get it on stream. Okay, let's jumpstart to the pig farm part here. What happened after the Times Colonist wrote this article about you and your pig farm? Um, what happened next with the you know, the stream of everything that happened? Well, actually, um, nothing, uh, because the, again, we were waiting for the, the resort to, uh, to become successful, so uh, we were sort of basing our hope of, uh, of being a successful pig farm on their success, and unfortunately, um, they just never became successful. Mm -hmm. So um, we just, uh, just kept on waiting and waiting away, and then finally, uh, I guess probably about three and a half years ago, we ended up selling the farm, and. Uh, and moving to where we are now, but uh, I understand that the resort now is uh, is underway again, or that their construction has started again. So, and the new owner of the of the farm is, uh, I think, is is carrying on in the same sort of vein. So I, I'm wishing him all the very best of luck in in a successful business, uh, if that's uh, if that's what he would like to do. Okay. Um, in the article, it mentioned 
you, your wife, and your 10-year-old son raising peacocks and ducks. Mm -hmm. So raising pigs, say that did happen. Say, mm -hmm. you know, the resort came through and this actually happened. How many pigs were you going to raise and how would you do it? Well, we, we were looking at uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of three to 400 uh, is what we thought we would manage. And uh, uh, we were looking at at one time uh, with how we were going to house them. And I know a lot of intensive pig farming is done in huge barns where everything's packed in. We didn't really like that idea, so we thought that maybe we'd build uh, maybe about 123 little pig houses that would maybe have two or three pigs in each one, and uh, that would be uh, you know, sort of spread out all over the property. And I guess in a way, it was it sort of mirror the, uh, the resort uh, having 123 units as well with uh, but although their people would be coming and going, I guess our, our pigs to some degree would be coming and going as well. And in fact, <laughs> with the, those people from the resort. Yeah. Um, okay. Salt Spring has obviously a huge tourist attraction. Okay. Now, when you wanted to have this big farm, was that going to be any sort of problem with the millionaires who are going to be living next door to you, seeing pigs, smelling pigs? Well, and, you know, I, I was sort of hoping that they would, uh, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of them eat bacon and eggs for breakfast and, uh, you know, having fr the ability to have free range bacon, uh, you know, and pork chops, uh, you know, I, I was hoping that they'd embrace it and also realize that, you know, with everything that you eat, there's consequences. And uh, so, yeah, no, I was, I was hoping that to anybody, you know, that would be visiting the resort would, uh, would sort of look at it as a, as a real plus. Okay. So were you, this pig farm, were you going to be slicing and dicing pigs or was it more of a breeding grounds for, you know? Well, you know. That, <laughs> I don't know a lot about pets. Is pigs or pigs yeah, for eating or what happens on a farm? So. See, that's, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting question because uh, it's certainly gone through our minds. Uh, you know, it's one thing to raise them and, uh, you know, any of the, the animals that we've had in the past, like, uh, you know, ducks and, uh, and chickens and peacocks and everything, we've always thought of them as pets. And so this was going to be a real challenge for us. But um, as it's turned out, uh, we never really had to face that, uh, that question of how we were actually going to deal with that part of it. But uh, I'm guessing we probably would have farmed that out. Uh, yeah. Uh, um this is going to sound totally out there, and I hope I don't offend you in any way, but... I'm used to that. <laughs> did the possibility of pets as pigs ever cross your mind as a family? Well, actually, we had a lot of people that were uh, approaching us uh, in that time and uh, saying that they would like to actually sponsor a pig, that they would, you know, if, uh, if, they weren't, if we needed help getting the, the farm going and that, they'd like to actually sponsor a pig. and. So that's um, that. That might have been a really good possibility, uh, and I, I'm sure we would have. We probably would have looked at that once we really got into that process. Uh, uh, but that's uh, yeah, that's very interesting. Thought pets as pigs and uh, having people come out to the farm maybe and spend a little time with their pet and sort of pet, pet. Pig, pet petting farm, pig petting farm, <laughs> pig petting farm. I, I don't think that there's many of those out there, but you just never know. Maybe, maybe it'd be a good tourist attraction. Maybe Salt Spring could be known as pet petting farm or a, a pig petting farm and kayaking. Yeah, I, it's, you know, a gentle, uh, you know, gentle community. So that, yeah, that might fit in better rather than the, the traditional sort of, you know, slaughter. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, okay, I was reviewing the, um, the candidate selection from 2005 back in November, and um, one of the topics that came up in that, um, I guess, campaign or whichever was going on was, you know, our industry, our infrastructure on Salt Spring. Um, three of the main things that came up was tourism, obviously, mm -hmm. and the second one that came up that I remember um, was farming. Um, so I just wanted to hear your take on that. Um, it's one of our primary resources here. And one of the, I actually don't recall her name, but she had mentioned that we have enough farmers on this island to only feed 300 people. So you with the pig farm, how would you, I guess, add to the infrastructure of, of Salt Spring with that? Well, it's, um, it's interesting when we're looking at uh, how, much, you know, how much food we currently grow on the island. That's, uh, uh, we, we probably don't grow much more than uh, what would feed 5% uh, of the island population now. But the capacity of farming, is, uh, uh, as far as food production and everything goes, it's really uh, something that 
that hasn't occurred on salt spring in, a, in an intense nature since probably the early 1900s. Um, in the early 1900s, Salt Spring Island uh, was the apple producer of British Columbia uh, before the Okanagan came on. Uh, and this is, if you drive anywhere around Salt Spring, you'll see uh, a lot of old apple orchards and Salt Spring supplied a, a huge, huge amount of, uh, of apples uh, and a lot of other produce to the rest of BC, butter as an example. So it's a question, I think, in farming of getting back to um, more of an intensive nature and there are some, uh, some actual ideas that are out there right now that could possibly do that. And, I think, uh, from what I understand, in talking to some of the more knowledgeable farmers on the island, you could actually feed the island quite easily off of uh, about 100 acres of good arable land if it's done in an intensive way. And but that you're talking when you're talking about pigs, you're talking about protein. So uh, that's uh, there's a fair amount of uh, beef production, uh, uh, lamb production, uh, a little bit of pig production. And up until, I guess just recently now, the, we had a, a salmon farm on the island. And that uh, uh, was likely producing a huge, probably one of the largest producers of protein. Uh, and, you know, everybody sort of thinks that in the emerg what happens in the case of an emergency. Mm -hmm. That would have been a, a huge source of emergency protein. But, uh, yeah, um, is, are pigs the way of the future for protein? I, um, I kind of doubt it. It's, it's probably more of a um, sort of a side dish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess we're just about to wrap things up on this area for now. Um, is there anything that you would like to say? I mean, it's about 10 years ago that <laughs> this whole idea came up. Is there anything else that you would like to say that, you know, might be interesting, informative, or anything to do with your Goofers Pig Farm? Gee, I, you know, I don't know. It's a, we, we came so close uh, to, you know, really to getting it up and running. And uh, again, it's, uh, it's one of those things where uh, our success was dependent on someone else's success. And unfortunately, uh, they haven't been very successful. And uh, I guess what will be interesting is uh, looking to the future to see whether the new owners are going to be successful in their venture and uh, whether they will be able to have that uh, that market that they're, you know, I, I think probably hoping for, uh, you know, visiting them right next door and they'll be able to row, maybe even row across the lake and offer them, uh, you know, free range pork. So, yeah, I, I, that's all I can say, I guess, is just, you know, wish them, wish them all good luck. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time. So I was just speaking today with Eric Booth. I'm Kelsey Ammon, and we were speaking about the Goofers Pig Farm. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying earlier, that uh, unfortunately this was about as, as close as we got to the real pigs uh, on the farm. This is the actual pig that was on, uh, on the pig mobile that uh, ran around Ganges for about three years. Okay, I'm back here with Eric Booth, myself, and Babe. Um, <laughs> I'd like to um, ask you, Eric, can you tell me a little bit about the Channel Ridge and Bullock Lake? Yeah, I guess the comparison uh, between the two is uh, uh, what I think a lot of the islanders took exception to as far as the, the size of the development at Bullock Lake. Uh, Bullock Lake uh, property with the resort is about 35 acres and there's about 123 units going in. Um, you compare that to Channel Ridge where there's uh, over uh, over a thousand acres, mm -hmm. uh, there's a maximum of 577 units going in. Mm -hmm. So the that's that's one of the I, I think probably the the major differences between the Bullock Lake Resort and any other development on Salt Spring. Uh, it's much much uh, denser than anywhere in the downtown area. Um, any of the existing condominium developments like uh, Grace Point or Kingfisher or Ross Common. So I think that that was the uh, Probably the, the single thing that uh, that the islanders were uh, concerned about was the actual density. How how many units uh, uh, were going to be going into a single uh, unit or a single resort? Okay, I see. Um, is there anything else you'd want to touch base about the Channel Ridge diversity at all that might be informative for this? No, the uh, Channel Ridge itself uh, was uh, de developed uh, as a concept uh, back in the late '80s and. Uh, uh, the community went through a fairly lengthy process to determine how they thought maybe the, uh, the you know, it would turn out the best. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in fairly stark contrast to the the ability of a developer to go into a piece of property and uh, 
uh, we don't do that kind of a, a of an intensive development. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, everybody always talks about uh, Channel Ridge as being the you know the, the major development, but it's actually it's um, it, for the amount of area that it's actually covering. It's uh, it's not that uh, that great of a density overall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <music>